Hi there, Mr Evans here with a video on capacity and capacity utilisation. Um, this is uh, the final video in this short section on how to analyse the, the performance of the operations uh, department. Um, so, uh, what is capacity? Capacity is the total output a firm can produce when fully utilising all of their resources. In other words, um, a firm has got uh, some assets, it's got machinery, it may have some buildings, um, it, will ha it may have a labour force and um, the capacity is the total amount of output that uh, those uh, factors of production can produce in a given period of time, maybe a day, a, a month, a year, whatever. So um, that's capacity. Capacity utilisation, therefore, is the proportion of total output that is actually being produced. So, if um, the if a factory working flat out, if all the machines are on all the time, if uh, the workforce is working uh, full time and maybe even a little bit of overtime, if that factory can produce 500 units, um, its capacity is 500. Um, however, if at the moment um, no, people aren't working quite flat out, uh, we're only producing 400 units, well the capacity utilisation, uh, I can work that out by uh, dividing the actual output 400 by the maximum output 500 and multiplying that by 100, put it in the percentage terms and that will give me 80%. That business will be working at 80% capacity. So how do we go about interpreting that figure and using that to judge the effectiveness of the operations department? First of all, we may want to uh, put that in context and see what's happened in previous years. Is the uh, capacity utilisation going up? Is it going down? Uh, what's the trend? We might want to compare it with some of our competitors, so we're benchmarking against them. How are we doing against our competitors? Um, but there are some general rules as well that we can apply. The first one uh, being that uh, operating at a low capacity, so anything you know, below about uh, 60-70% would probably be considered fairly low capacity. Um, it implies that an organisation's assets are not being properly utilised. We may have a factory building somewhere that maybe aren't even being used. Machines certainly sat around that uh, are not producing uh, any goods or services. Maybe some workers are uh, not being uh, used effectively. We're, we're, we're paying them by the hour perhaps, but they're not actually producing um, goods for us uh, while we're paying them. Um, so that would imply that we're not uh, fully utilising our assets. On the other hand, operating at high capacity can imply that the organisation is under pressure. Um, if we're operating anywhere between about 90 uh, and 100%, that could be quite stressful uh, for the workforce, people under pressure, um, maybe the business will be unable to cope with any sudden changes in demand. Uh, you know, if we're operating in 95% capacity and unexpectedly uh, large order comes in, maybe the business won't be able to accept that order. Maybe it will have to turn it away. Um, disappointing client, uh, leading to a poor reputation for the organisation. So. How do we interpret capacity utilisation? Well, most organisations will target, you'll see it in textbooks, anywhere between 80% to 90% capacity utilisation is considered pretty good. That uh, strikes a decent balance between uh, using our uh, assets um, efficiently, making our assets sweat is the term that is often used. Um, but also uh, not absolutely driving them flat out and leaving some room for flexibility so we can deal with uh, large unexpected orders um, and, and, and just uh, not being flat out. So uh, there are some advantages of operating at a high capacity utilisation. Uh, the more efficiently we use our resources, 
uh, we've paid for our resources, so the more efficiently we use them, uh, we're going to get lower unit costs. If we can make the same number of resources produce a higher amount of units, the cost, the average cost of producing each unit will fall. So um, that is an advantage of high capacity utilisation. Um, as is higher profitability, assuming that we can sell all of the units that we are um, uh, we're producing. We're, we're, uh, we're, more units we sell, the more profit that we should make. Um, finally, it could be motivational for the workforce. They're unlikely to lose their job if the organisation is absolutely flat out. It gives people confidence, sense of job security. People won't be bored at work. So um, they can be some of the advantages of high capacity utilisation. On the other hand, I've mentioned that the business may not be able to respond to non-standard orders or changes in demand. Um, there may be a lack of time for maintenance and repair of machinery. There can be stress for the workforce. Okay, I said it can be motivational, but maybe it's also quite stressful. They're being asked to work overtime. Uh, they're working flat out when they're there. Um, Maybe it's quite tiring, etc. There can be an impact on the business in terms of strategic planning time. I certainly think of um, teaching. Uh, our busy time obviously is around the exam period. And at that point, around the exam time, teachers tend to be so busy supporting students in the run up to the exam that we get little time to think, do strategic thinking. Um, and it's similar in businesses. Uh, if you're absolutely flat out, trying to meet consumer demand, you don't have time to think big picture and potentially things can get quite chaotic if you don't have that time uh, to just step back for a minute and think about where the organisation is going. Finally, there can be an impact on quality. Um, if we're rushing to get things produced, maybe um, that can, uh, you know, things can slip through the net that wouldn't otherwise. Um, so, just to show you these sort of questions you might get asked on capacity utilisation, this is from a 2011 exam. Calculate the velocity limit its capacity utilisation for 2010. Again, I'd always suggest before you read a case study in the exam, just to know what questions you're being asked. Quickly scan the questions. I would then, uh, when I'm reading the case study, I would then know that I'm going to be looking out for information about capacity utilisation in 2010. So here is the case study. Um, now then, uh, I've seen here production capacity, 200 cars a year. In 2010, following an agreement with the workforce to work longer hours, um, for a 20% pay increase, this figure rose by 17%. So I know that I'm looking for the... Um, I know I need to get the uh, data for the formula, so the formula is uh, current output divided by maximum output times 100. So here's the maximum output, 200 plus 17%, so that's going to be 234 cars is the maximum output. Then I know I'm looking out for uh, how many cars they produced in 2010. There's the key data for 2010. Here's the average monthly production. So I need to do a calculation with that. Um, I need to work out 19 times uh, 12. Um, I've done it on the calculator before. It comes out to about 228. 228 divided by 234. Um, I've done all this in the calculator, obviously. It comes out at, uh, I think it's 228, about 97% um, capacity. So that organisation, this organisation was working at an extremely high capacity. 97% is very high. Um, and I will then be able to use that as a measure of performance. I can draw some conclusions about this business. Maybe it's going to struggle to meet extra demand. Maybe its assets are being overused and not getting a chance to repair them. Um, so, yeah, I can use that to, to help me analyse the position the business is in and make realistic recommendations. Um, so that's capacity and capacity utilisation and how they're used to judge operational performance.